Hey everyone, this is Nick, and according to some, the reason why the masses haven't moved to Linux yet is because Linux apps have a reputation for being crappy. They perform worse than their proprietary counterparts, they do less, they have bad UX or bad UI, they're just generally bad, and bad apps means no one moves to Linux. We're gonna talk about that in this video, and we're gonna see why I think that this argument doesn't hold any water. Unlike today's sponsor, which is going to let you get $100 free credit on your own Linux or gaming server. Thanks to Linode for sponsoring this video. Linode is the best choice to deploy your own Linux or gaming server. Getting started is extremely easy thanks to their app marketplace. You can just pick from one of the many, many apps they offer, select a few configuration options and just one click deploy that server. It's super simple. It works for a development environment, but also for a Minecraft or Valheim server. Among the most notable apps, Linode has Moodle to create your own learning management system and teach and sell courses in minutes, but they also have stuff like Pi-hole to block ads. But please don't block mine, I'm just a poor dude working from his flat. From Focal Board, a Trello alternative to Rocket Chat, which is the equivalent to Slack or Teams, Linode has everything you would want. Click the link in the description to get your $100 credits and get started. Okay, so first let's talk user interface or user experience. Some people say that Linux apps have bad UI or bad UX. The problem is most people don't really know what that means. User interface is the look and feel of the application. How it looks, how the buttons look, where they're positioned, the capacity of the app to adapt to various window sizes. In short, it's the visual part of the application. User experience is a more nebulous concept. It refers to the whole feeling of using the app. Does it feel good to use? Do you feel efficient with it? Is it well guided? In short, it's the user friendliness of the application. From what I understand, what people mean when they say that Linux apps have bad user interface or bad user experience is, I couldn't use it after using it for five minutes. Oh, really? Of course, you're not going to be proficient with a completely different application after a few minutes, especially for complex programs like an office suite or graphics design stuff. How long did it take people to be proficient with Microsoft Office, with Photoshop, with Adobe Premiere or AutoCAD? The Linux alternatives aren't copies of these programs. They don't aim to copy the user interface or the user experience of their proprietary counterparts. It's unreasonable to expect them to work like what you know. So in most cases, this argument boils down to this is not the user interface I'm used to use. I don't know how this app works. And that's not a fault of the Linux application itself, unless it does try to be a complete clone of a proprietary piece of software that people are familiar with, which is rarely the case. Take a look at LibreOffice. The first launch offers tips to help you use it. They offer you a choice of user interface to let you get something close to what you know. That is good user experience. You cater to the user. Inkscape has a nice guided wizard every time you open it to help you create a new project. That's also good user experience. In terms of user interface, it's more subjective, but I don't think anyone would say that LibreOffice chose a terrible way to place their buttons and controls. Either it's a menu bar and toolbars or a ribbon. In both cases, the most used features are front and center. They use standard icons that people are used to. Same goes for GIMP or Inkscape. These applications don't have bad UI or bad UX. They're just not familiar to people. So it's a matter of habit, of muscle memory, not of design. People will assume that because they can't replicate the workflow they know from a similar app, then the new app must be bad. But that's not the case. These apps aren't clones. Of course, they're going to have a different workflow and that's totally normal. It doesn't make the application itself bad. I would also argue that some Linux apps have a better user interface than their proprietary counterparts. They are generally much better integrated with some desktops. If you're using GNOME, for example, GIMP, Inkscape or LibreOffice integrate very well with it. They pick up on your theme, on your dark theme. They use the same button design you're used to. They just fit. That's not the case for Adobe programs or Microsoft Office on Windows, for example. Gnome apps or elementary apps also do a great job of onboarding the user with very clear first run screens. And they all display great UI with legible controls, descriptive icons and large click targets. KDE apps also made a lot of progress on that front 
by only exposing the necessary buttons and options and moving all the more convoluted, less used items in a hamburger menu. So, to sum up this point, Linux apps in general don't have bad UI or bad UX, at least not worse than what you can find on other systems. They're just different. And so, of course, you're going to have to relearn the workflow. You're going to have to relearn your muscle memory. You're going to have to retrain yourself to learn how to use these complex apps, especially in the case of pro software or niche software like office suites, like graphic design apps, like video editors. You just cannot bring all your knowledge and expect these apps to work exactly like you think they should. And just like with Linux, spending time with it and accepting to be less proficient for a time is generally a path to being more productive in the long run. Once you learn other ways to do things, you tend to realize that some of the stuff you got used to was absurd and that there are other better ways to do things. So now that this is out of the way, we're also going to see why the quality of Linux apps doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of making the masses use Linux. Let's assume that the argument is true, that all Linux apps suck compared to their proprietary counterparts, that there is no redeeming quality to them and that people would never use them. They're all horrible, no good, disgustingly badly designed failures of an application. They're all Internet Explorer, let's say. Well, it still wouldn't matter for most people. You know why? Because most people only ever need a web browser. The most used app on any OS is the web browser by the vast majority of people. They check their email on the webmail. They do video conferencing on the browser. They chat on the browser. They use social media on the browser. They watch videos on their browser. They even use Office Suites in there. Apart from the browser, they use a file manager and that's about it. And Linux has all the web browsers you might want. We've got Google Chrome, we've got blue Google Chrome, we've got orange Chrome, red Chrome, round Chrome, Microsoft Chrome, and Firefox. Even if all the Linux apps were terrible, you still have the exact same web browsers that people are used to. And that's the only app that matters in most cases. Native apps are less and less relevant for the masses. And as such, the quality of Linux apps really doesn't have any impact on the popularity of Linux. Of course, the lack of certain applications might hurt Linux adoption. The fact that we don't have Microsoft Office or Adobe Photoshop probably deters some people from even trying Linux. But the quality of the alternatives we offer doesn't really come into play here. I would also argue that the applications themselves don't matter, not just because most people work in a browser, but also because we have way bigger blockers to Linux adoption than the quality of our applications. See, most people don't use Linux applications until after they've installed Linux. That's why we have so many forum posts asking for good alternatives to popular Windows or Mac software. The applications don't really matter for the sheer number of Linux installs, because not a lot of people research this stuff beforehand. It does matter for retention though. If our apps were terrible, or if people really need something that doesn't exist on Linux, then obviously they will not stick around. But we have way bigger problems than the quality of our apps, however good or bad they might be. Linux has a notoriety problem on the desktop, not a quality problem. Most people haven't heard the word Linux, except maybe referring to servers or to something linked to Android. But on the desktop, they don't know and they don't care because it's not the thing that shipped with the computer that they bought. They don't know that they can replace the default that came with their computer, often Windows. They don't even know that it's possible. The biggest blocker for Linux adoption is hardware availability. Until we have computers sold in retail stores with Linux pre-installed, the masses won't use Linux. People will be okay to learn something new if they bought it in a store. For a while, netbooks were very popular and a lot of them ran on Linux. People are buying Chromebooks like crazy. That's not Windows. They can't run their Windows apps on that. They still don't care and they still can use them. If you sell computers with Linux pre-installed, people will end up buying them and they will use them. If you could buy a PS5, you wouldn't be pissed that your Xbox games don't run on it. If you bought an Android phone, you wouldn't be pissed that your iPhone apps don't automatically transfer. If you buy a Mac, you're not pissed that your Windows apps don't run on it. I don't know why people would expect that Linux would run Mac or Windows apps. Those are different systems. People don't expect that. 
Then, once people have bought Linux devices, that's when quality of applications will start to matter for retention and adoption. And as we've seen, we don't have a quality problem. We have a it's different problem. Of course, things aren't perfect. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that all of our apps are great for everyone, that all the niches are covered by perfect applications on Linux, or that even all of our apps are really good. That's not the case. There are still a lot of niches that have no real alternatives to their Windows counterparts. For highly specific professional markets, our alternatives also just can't work. For example, the Adobe Suite can't be replaced with GIMP, Kdenlive, and Inkscape. While each program is great individually, they just don't have the same feature set, the same level of integration that Adobe programs enjoy. And even if they did, most pros could not switch to these apps because they would lose compatibility with their older projects and the time they would need to relearn how to do things would be time not spent being productive. And of course, some Linux apps do have a bad user interface or a bad user experience. Some apps are developed by developers that just want something for them. Just because it's open source doesn't mean that they thought the app would be used by millions of people. And so some apps are just badly designed and they are not thought out for the user. But that's okay, that's the case on other platforms too. One example is OBS. While it's very powerful and once you're familiar with it, it's really good. The UI is really not great. Button placement isn't intuitive. Nothing really explains what a source or a scene is. Options are not super legible or well explained. Don't be mad, I love OBS, I use it all the time, but in terms of design, it's not great. So yeah, of course, things aren't perfect. Some Linux apps are crappy or unstable or badly designed, just like some Windows apps are or like some Mac apps are. Now, wait a minute, Mac apps cannot be badly designed because Macs are designed, right? Linux apps, like any other, can be bad or can be good. I personally think from my 10 years of UI and UX work experience that most of the major Linux apps do have good design and good user interface and good user experience. But in any case, the notion that Linux isn't growing on the mass market because its apps are bad, that notion is just incorrect. Linux doesn't grow much on the desktop because people don't know about it. The quality of apps doesn't matter if people don't even know that these apps exist. And if people knew about Linux and were able to buy computers with Linux pre-installed, most of them would just use a web browser, which is no problem at all on Linux. Other people that want to use native applications would find a healthy selection of good quality stuff, but they would have to get used to these and relearn some of their habits. And that's the most obvious issue. For a lot of people, relearning something that they already know how to do on another program is deemed unacceptable. And if the app doesn't offer the exact same workflow that they're used to, and they can't use it after five minutes of trial and error, they'll automatically assume that it's bad. But that's not true. The truth is, Linux is a different operating system. Its applications are different. It's perfectly normal that they would work in a different way. And expecting them to be clones of already existing software isn't reasonable. This expectation, in my opinion, has zero impact on the adoption of Linux by the mass market. Whether you think that Linux apps are bad or good, that's your opinion, that's my opinion, that's your choice. But it has no impact because People will just not use something that they don't even know exists. But for people who do know that Linux exists, today's sponsor will be perfect. It's Slimbook. These guys are based in Valencia, Spain. They make Linux laptops, Linux desktops at all price points. They ship worldwide. They have a wide keyboard range and they have a great variety of devices from all-in-ones to small form factor PCs with great aluminum enclosures to bigger desktops to laptops for gaming, ultrabooks, cheaper ultrabooks, Basically, they've got you covered for every single one of your needs. So just click the link in the description below if you want to check out their various devices. And if you buy one, you'll help support the development of Linux, driver support, stuff like that. And you'll also help support the channel. So thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't, you can also dislike it and tell me why in the comments as well. If you want to help me make more of these videos, you can also join my Patreon subscribers and my YouTube members, or anyone you choose. Both of them get access to the same benefits and they're priced the exact same. 
You get a weekly patron cast on Mondays and you get the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thank you everyone for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!